So, is parkour for you? And if yes, what would be the best way to learn parkour? What or maybe you're having trouble imagining what doing parkour would actually look like. And I'm no sports scientist, but I have 20 years worth of parkour experience. So take that for whatever it's worth. I don't know, 50 cents. And keep in mind that this is my unique approach to suit anybody who has a body. It doesn't matter if you're young or old or beautiful or super extra beautiful. Anybody can give this method a go. I actually designed it so you don't need a coach, a gym, or a local community. That was important to me because I also started with nothing and was completely unfit. And I didn't want you to feel like your circumstances are gonna hold you back. But before we answer how, let's answer why. Oh, can I make it to that brunch? Come on. Woohoo! Why would it be a good idea for you or anybody to waste your time by learning how to balance on rails and jump over walls? Good question. From my experience, people who do parkour love it so much because it's an activity that's fun and rewarding. As a side effect, it helps build a strong body and a deep understanding how to move your body. So on the physical side, it's perfect functional fitness. But I would argue the mental side is where you will experience the real gains. Practicing parkour helps you build confidence because you realize you are capable to more than you originally thought. It makes you braver because you learn how to overcome fear. It teaches you problem solving as you learn to figure out how to overcome different obstacles. Parkour reminds you that you shouldn't compare yourself to others. It makes you reconnect with your inner child by seeing the world around you as a playground. It can be a tool for self-expression and helps you embrace that it's okay to live life a little bit out of the ordinary, even if that means getting a funny look every once in a while. As an extra on top, the parkour community is a lovely bunch of people. One, two, three. Jesus. from all walks of life who are joy to be around. So that's the why answered. But you'll only get to enjoy those benefits if parkour is actually the right thing for you. One sign that you would like parkour is that you loved climbing trees and playing tag as a kid. Or like me, were fascinated by chase scenes in action movies and anime. Or simply enjoy watching parkour videos like this one. Therefore, the first thing we need to find out is if you actually like parkour. How are we going to do that? Don't worry, I'll get to it. But first, I need you to understand my teaching style. He's a tough teacher. I have my own way of dealing with behavior problems with an unconventional lesson plan. School's in session, gentlemen. Look, I'll be honest, I won't recommend that you learn the most important or even useful skills first. Instead, I want to start you out with the most fun skills. And that's because I want to make you fall in love with parkour. I think that's the most important part of being a beginner. I want you to get a taste of parkour by giving you some easy wins. Because how can I expect you to work hard if you're not even invested yet? I'm approaching this like it's a relationship. So I'm going to take you on a first date with parkour, where I'm going to show the sport from its most fun and presentable side. And once you've fallen in love with parkour and are committed to the relationship, only then, you get to see me without makeup and I'm going to ask you to put in some work to keep this relationship going. Here's an example. I've seen a lot of coaches start teaching parkour by practicing the parkour role with their students, which is with no doubt one of the most useful skills in all of parkour. But I don't think it's a great beginner skill because it can take months to truly get it. The process to learn the role is uncomfortable and at the end it's not even a really cool skill to show off. So. I'm going to teach more of a fun role for beginners and save the parkour role for the intermediate learners. Because I still want you to taste what it's like to roll around on the ground and have fun exploring that type of movement, but I want to make it as enjoyable as possible. Now that you understand the approach, we need to address one more problem before we get started. In my humble opinion, the biggest problem for parkour beginners is that there's a lot of different ways to do parkour and they suit different types of people at different stages in their life. For example, you could do parkour more recreationally, or you might want to push all the way to become a professional athlete, 
You might want to do it for fitness or just to have a fun hobby to do with your friends. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yes. And without experience, it's hard to figure out where to start. So it's not just that when it comes to parkour, there's many roads that lead to Rome. There's also more than one Rome. To fix this problem, I broke all the movements of parkour down into six categories. Those are balance, landing on flat ground, precision landings, hanging and climbing, rolls, vaults, underbars which later progress into swings. Let's not forget wall runs. You could argue that acrobatics are another category, but I'm going to leave it out for the purpose of this video. Once I had all the categories, I came up with skill progressions for each category. This way you can start out easy and you can get a taste of all the different categories within parkour. You can find out if you're into all of them or just some of them. And worst case, at the end you can decide that parkour is not for you, but at least you learn some useful skills and you can live on knowing that you gave it a try. Or best case, you found out that parkour is exactly the right fit for you. And now you already have the perfect fundamental knowledge to learn whatever next skill you'd like. By the way, what you're about to see is basically a brief summary of my parkour beginner course, The Perfect Takeoff. In that course, I have time to explain all these topics deeply and give tutorials for each and every move. But for the purpose of this video, I'll just run through everything quickly to give you an overview. So if you'd like more guidance than I can offer in this video, please click the link in the description to check out the full course. All right, sounds like a plan. Then let's get into it. Lesson zero, getting ready. For parkour, you want to wear some comfortable shoes. Make sure the sole is one piece of rubber from front to end and that they're not too heavy. They also shouldn't have too much padding. Especially in the beginning, I think it's important to really feel a bad landing. Then go out and look for a parkour spot that ideally has soft ground for rolls, a wall or rail at knee height for balance and vaults, another wall between knee and waist height for more vaulting, curbs or low ledges for precision landings, a handrail with a ledge, a handrail for underbars, and a pull-up bar or tree. Lastly, look for a grippy wall at shoulder height. Of course, that's a lot to find in just one location. These can be spread out all across your neighborhood. Doesn't matter. Good places to look are usually around public parks, playgrounds, universities, workout parks, or simply the areas around bigger apartment buildings. Right now, you might feel like there are no parkour spots where you live. But once you're gonna start exploring, you will develop what we call parkour vision. And this basically means you will start seeing spots that you simply didn't notice before. And this will keep happening throughout your parkour adventure as your skills progress. Hello. There's nothing here. No. Now, what does a parkour training station actually look like? Do you just leave your house and run through your city in a straight line? No! I mean, you could do that, and there's really no rules that anybody has to follow, but in general, this is the structure that a parkour training loosely follows. First, I start with a quick warm up at the spot. Uh. Then I start slowly moving around the spot and exploring it without really trying to think about a specific move or skill I want to do. I'm just getting familiar with the space and I'm continuing warming up through this process. Then I move on to practicing specific skills. Usually I have one or two moves that I've been wanting to try or that I'm working on. And then I spend however time I like practicing those. 
All right, so a few weeks ago, Shade posted this trick to his Instagram, and I've been wanting to try it. It's so badass. And it looks like it might not be that difficult, but I'm, let's, let's see if, if I can do it or not. If I don't have a specific move in mind, I'll go look for what we call a challenge. All right, challenge. Straight Kong over rail at nose height. Basically, it's something that's calling out to you at the spot, like balancing from one side of a rail to another, sticking a certain jump, or something like getting from one side of the spot to the other without touching the ground. Yes! Finding challenges is a more playful way you can structure your training. Depending on your personality, you might enjoy practicing specific moves more, or you might want to just explore and then do whatever challenges call out to you on that day. Either way, once I'm done, I try to wind down with some light movement or some relaxed stretching. Parkour sessions are usually a lot more free-flowing than, let's say, a workout at a gym. This might be your thing or not, so how structured you want it to be is totally up to you. Now that you understand the general context a bit more, let's get to the moves. Lesson one, balance. I think it's a good idea to start with balancing because before we jump, we have to learn how to stand because all that jumping is is going from one position of balance to ideally another position of balance. To start, get yourself a low wall or rail and start out by balancing on one leg. By the way, this is the perfect foot position you should have on the rail and you should be looking about a meter ahead of you onto the rail. Once you can stand on one leg, practice doing that on the other leg. Next, you just start switching from one leg to the other. Oh damn, that's what we call walking. <laughs> Don't worry about going fast, keep it slow and you'll stay in control. Next, we're gonna practice standing perpendicular. This is actually pretty hard, but once you nailed it, you can pivot on a rail. But how do we start balancing on a rail if it's a little bit higher? To be able to do this, we're gonna learn the cat balance, which is also a great strength exercise. Trust me, you'll feel it. Once you feel comfortable with the cat balance, try standing up and going back down. And once you can do all those balancing skills, you can connect them neatly into a sequence, which allows you to get up or down a rail, and you can now find your balance at different positions along the way. Before you start balancing on anything higher than knee height, we should learn how to land properly. That's why we're going to lesson two, landing on flat ground. There are three common landings you see in parkour. Level one, the quick bounce is used for small impact. Level two, the step out lets you continue momentum forwards. In level three, the four point landing is for bigger impact. The key for all of these is to land on the balls of your feet and practice keeping the right amount of tension in your legs and core so you can absorb the impact with your muscles instead of your joints. A good landing should feel soft and springy. A lot of times a quiet landing is also an indicator for a soft landing. It will take some time, but you'll develop a natural feeling for it. Of course, it's tempting to then try out these landings from higher up, but please be patient. Even if your muscles are strong enough to absorb the impact, your joints, ligaments, and tendons need much longer to adapt to the stress you're putting on your body. A great rule of thumb for beginners is to not jump off of anything that you can't jump onto. And once you have a basic understanding of landing on flat ground, I recommend you practice Lesson three, precision landings. When you land on a ledge or rail, you want to aim to land on the balls of your feet. I cover why that is and lots of useful details in my online course. It's a big topic with a lot of nuance, so I have to brush over it a little bit for this overview. But fundamentally, there are five ways to enter a precision landing. 
the step precision is most useful for downward jumps, strides, running precision jumps, standing precision jumps, and what I like to call the basketball takeoff. You often see this takeoff when players take off to dunk because it's a great way to transition forwards momentum into height. The proper parkour name is probably the split foot takeoff and it's definitely my favorite. Once you've acquired balance and the different types of landing, you can already start playing the floor is lava and find a lot of really cool combinations and challenges using those skills. A lot of athletes actually focus heavily on these landing techniques because it's just so satisfying when you nail the perfect stick. I did not think I was gonna make that. I thought I was gonna fall straight backwards, but then it was perfect. <laughs> Quick important detail before we move on to the next move. Whatever you do, please learn the skills I just mentioned before you learn anything else in this course. You need to learn how to balance, land on flat, and land on ledges. That is so important, and it doesn't mean you have to master them. A basic understanding is enough. These landing techniques and balance is part of any other skill you're gonna do in the future, so if you learn them first, you're gonna automatically move better, and you're gonna practice them with every other skill you're doing. All right, so if you recall, we still wanna learn hanging and climbing, rolls, vaults, underbars, and swings, but you can learn those in whatever order you like whatever your local spots allow. You can also just learn one or two skills from each category and then jump to a different category. Everything is allowed at this point and as long as you've got balance and landings down, there's really nothing you can do wrong. And what does it mean to say you've learned a skill? Well, I think you can say you learned a skill if you can perform it perfectly three times in a row. But hey, I'm not your boss. Pasha is the boss, but he runs a pretty loose ship. Lesson four, hanging and climbing, part one. Hanging and climbing is my least favorite skill to do. Oh, God. But it's just so damn useful, I can't get around it. Some people actually love it. I consider them weird, but anyways, let's dive into it. We're gonna start with the front support position, which is underwhelming to look at, but if you know how to move in and out of this position, it will give you tons of opportunities to move through a space while making it look effortless. You might notice this position being uncomfortable for your wrists at first. Simply start slow and take a break when your wrists get tired, and over time, you'll get used to it. Next, we're gonna to learn to jump into the front support. This doesn't have to be a big jump. Just make sure your feet reach the wall first and take most of the impact before your hands arrive on top of the wall and stabilize your body. This is a really useful and common move that nobody formally teaches for whatever reason. Next, we're gonna learn what I call the dolphin kick out. Maybe you could call this move a cast. I'm not really sure. It doesn't matter really because a lot of these small moves don't have an official name in parkour. Either way, this kick will allow you to move out of waist support in creative ways and will eventually build the strength you need to kick up onto the wall. The next move is the step up and step down, which will make you look sexy as hell as you move onto a wall. There's a little trick to getting your right leg up on top of the wall. First of all, you wanna keep the toes of your left leg pushing against the wall. Now you start the motion by swinging your right leg back. This lifts up your hips and creates some space between you and the wall. Carry on that momentum and lift your leg to the side and on top of the wall. And then from here you can remove your right hand. I like to just do this, boom, in one go. Now you're gonna use this leg to push up. Again, you keep your left foot now pushed up against the surface of the wall to give you another point of contact. And then you replace your left hand with your left foot and you're back where you started. And lastly, you should acquire the glorious butt spin. That way you can move along a wall in style. And uh, this one, I have to tell you, is a little bit more difficult than it looks, but it's a good move. And that is very cute, you do have to say. Now, none of these moves are overwhelmingly impressive by themselves, but if you put them together, they connect beautifully and they're actually really useful. Here's a quick example of me using all these moves together. Gonna start out by jumping into waist support. And from here, I can easily turn myself around, find my way up on top of the wall. We know how to balance, so I can do that for as long as I like. I can come back down to my cat balance, 
step back down into waist support, and whoo, jump back out. And this way, these moves are actually really useful. And just imagine as you're learning more and more moves, these little in-between moves that are really simple become really useful and they make your movement look very purposeful and beautiful. Lesson five, hanging and climbing part two. Another staple in parkour is the arm hang position, which is the most comfortable resting position on a wall. Depending on the wall, it's more or less comfortable. <laughs> Start by just hanging. And hang back into your extended arms, like my wrists, elbows, shoulders, that whole area can be completely relaxed as I hang back into it. By leaning back, this puts my center of gravity a little bit away from the wall, which then allows me to push into the ledge instead of standing on top of it, like it is when I'm in this position. You can imagine all my weight is pushing on top of the ledge. Instead, by leaning back, I manage to then push into the ledge, which is a much more comfortable position to hang in, and it translates to more difficult hanging positions. Then practice the side shimmy. Now we're gonna learn the shimmy. When you do this, you really just wanna work with your legs. You just give it a little bit of a bounce from your ankles that just gets you that little bit off the ledge. I want you to try bouncing from side to side. Bouncing to my right, I'm gonna reach over with my left hand as I bounce to my right. Sounds more complicated than it is. Bounce, readjust, and we come back. Bounce, and reach over at the same time. Boom. And this gets really fun when you do a few in a row. There's a bit of a rhythm you wanna catch, and if you catch that right rhythm, you can ride the momentum of the bounce and you can just keep going using very little power. Play with some small dinos. The dino is actually a really useful technique that lets you overcome obstacles you otherwise couldn't. I'm sorry to disappoint, but this technique was not invented by dinosaurs. Instead, dino is a term we borrowed from rock climbing and stands for dynamic. Now, dinos are super useful, but they also come in a million different shapes, sizes, and difficult levels. You can go up, down, left, right, one hand, two hand. No, that's a little bit smaller. This is gonna be our target for today. Boom. To do this, it's really quite simple. You wanna stand up and get your body close to the wall. And when you stand up, you have a moment where your arms have time to reach onto a new object. And you wanna use this timing to then reach up to the higher ledge. This will probably feel impossible on a flat wall at first, so ideally get something with a rail on top. Again, this is not going to be super impressive to do when you start out, but these are the simple tools which allow you to become stronger and move through different spaces efficiently. Once you have a basic grasp of the arm hang position, you can then learn the very stylish Bounce 360. This move is not essential by any means, but I just wanted to show you how these hanging moves can get really stylish once you get the basics down. Also, now that you know the arm hang position, you can use all the different takeoffs from lesson three, precision landings, to turn this into an arm jump. The arm jump is one of the most animalistic moves in parkour and a real beauty. Most important thing is you arrive at the wall with both of your feet before your hands arrive in the arm hang position. This is the most common mistake I see people make. They wanna get there, so eager to get there, and they're so worried about not being able to hold on that people just jump to that ledge with their hands first, hold on to the ledge safely, so they achieve that goal, but then what happens is because they're leaning forwards, their feet just painfully slam into the wall, and while you survive and you manage to achieve your goal, it is not clean technique and it's really painful. So, how do we do it better? What we wanna focus on is getting our feet into the ideal landing position. So you wanna land leaning slightly back with both of your feet, landing on the ledge with the balls of your feet, just like the precision landing. That way, your legs can take the impact and then you can just gently hold onto it with your hands. You shouldn't have to really <laughs> use a lot of muscle in your arms. So your legs are really doing most of the work. Lastly, practice the 180 drop, which is a common way to exit the arm hang position into any of the landings on flat ground that we already learned in lesson two. Lesson six, rolls and the reverse vault. The classic parkour roll is iconic, but not the smoothest introduction into the topic of rolls. So instead, I put together a progression with four useful roles to introduce you into this world of movement and help you pick up some useful skills along the way. 
Start with the sideways hip roll. And while you learn it, I want you to pay attention to how you can turn a few static positions into a smooth flow. If you practice the movement slowly and pay attention to the transitions between the positions, that was hard to say, your body will automatically start flowing from one movement into the other. This is something you can't learn in a book, but a process you can go through for each and every movement you're gonna learn. Trust me, your body will do it all by yourself if you focus and give it enough repetitions. Rolls are the perfect type of movement to practice this process because you can clearly feel when something is going smoothly or not. Repeat that same process for the pencil roll. Again, same steps. Arm down, twist the hips, shoulder down. Keep your body nice and straight and then have your hand ready to receive the ground. Boop. And push up into push up position. Get. You know, the more momentum you have, the less strength you're gonna. The teddy roll. And the sideways back roll. All of these moves can be adapted to overcome different kinds of obstacles. And once they are burned into your muscle memory, they will help you protect you when you fall. My light turned off. Once you're comfortable with these rolls on the ground, you can learn to do the sideways hip roll over a fat wall, which I also call a sit vault. And if that sit vault feels super comfortable, you can even turn it into a tasty reverse vault. All you have to do is slowly shift your weight away from your butt and onto your hand. Did we just turn a roll into a vault? Hmm. And just like that, you witnessed how all moves are connected in an intricate web of movements. And uh, how by planting a small seed early on and then nurturing it and can turn into something truly magnificent and completely different. It's kind of magical to me. <laughs> but also remember the flip side. If you skip ahead and don't take the time to learn these small moves, these more technical moves later on will be much more difficult and dangerous to learn. All right, quick side note, combos. If you've gotten those previous moves down, you can already start combining them into combos or completely new moves. Let's start off with this move. Now this might seem really complicated when you see it at first, but let me break it down into pieces that you understand and can probably do already. The way I get up on top of the wall is by doing the normal running takeoff to precision landing. Except when I do it, I land on one foot. And I land on one foot because this is the start of our step down into waist support. And then what I do is instead of just finishing in waist support, I realize that the middle position of the waist support is actually the same as the starting position for our butt roll. Woo! So, basically I'm just performing a butt roll on top of the wall, which you can also just do like this, and stepping out. So, putting it all back together, precision up, land on one leg, step down to waist support, butt roll, and see how that comes together so nicely, and I never even intended that. Cool. With these level progressions, I really want you to get a feeling for how these small, insignificant moves slowly add up and become your creative tools. The better you understand how each movement works and connects to the others, the easier it will be to adapt them to your unique circumstances. Some of these mini levels or steps might seem unnecessary at first, but trust me, the more boring or simple a move seems, the more powerful and versatile it usually is. Lesson seven, vaults. As a beginner, there are so many different vaults you could learn right from the start. So I had a hard time choosing, they all are so cool to me. But in the end, I settled for two vaults which are very different at their essence. You see, there are spinning vaults and tilting vaults. So I wanted you to learn one of each because if you do that, then you will have an easier time learning any other vault in the future. Oh, Let's go. no. This first sequence will help you understand spinning vaults. We'll start nice and smooth by learning the spin to sit and sit to spin. I know that's a terrible name, but whatever. I use this move to teach you two things. First of all, how to stack your joints on top of each other so you can carry your own weight with very little effort. 
Secondly, how to place your hand on the wall properly. So if I want to spin counterclockwise, I will turn my hand counterclockwise as far as it can go, and then I place it on the wall just like that. And this allows me to spin a full 360 degrees around the obstacle without having to change my grip at all. And that's why a lot of times when you see parkour people initiate a spin, they will put their hand down just like this. The added benefit of twisting our wrist is also that it creates a nice tension in our joint as we get to the end of our range of motion. It's a little bit like a rubber band that you twist and then as soon as you release that tension, it springs back around and it will actually help you generate the momentum for your twist. So you twist that rubber band and then you and then you release it again. These two skills are essential for mastering spinning vaults. And again, more details are in the course, but we're moving fast here. Next, I want you to learn the corner spin. Looks quite cute and casual. Let's do it. Up, up, corner spin, and sit to spin, and off we go into a beautiful day. And the walking chest vault. While you practice these, keep stacking your joints and the hand placement in mind. It will make it so much easier. Once both of these moves feel natural, you are ready for the chest vault. This vault is super convenient, and if I need to jump over a rail in day-to-day -day life, this is usually what I go for. Unless I have something in my hands, then it's the sit vault for me. And on the other side are tilting vaults, where you use a point of contact on the obstacle, wow, <laughs> to redirect your momentum, similar to a seesaw on the playground. <laughs> What's so funny? Three, two, one, jump. <laughs> Tilting vaults. These are all about moving forwards, which means you want to be able to overcome an obstacle without any spinning, or said differently, your chest should always be pointing in the same direction throughout the whole movement. To be able to do this, you need to understand how you can use the wall midair to push your body back into an upright position. This simple exercise right here is an easy way to understand that feeling. A tilting progression starts with the side drop. Next is the side vault, which I think is just super delicious to look at. Then the two hand vault. The safety vault and finally the speed vault. Now we are literally moving fast. Lesson seven, underbars and swings. When it comes to learning underbars and swings, I'm gonna take a little bit of an unconventional approach. I think going straight into swinging from one bar to another is way too risky for most beginners. And it's a lot of stress on the shoulders. Plus, good spots for those kind of swings are quite rare. So instead, I recommend to ease into this field of movement with underbars because as you increase the distance of your underbars eventually, they will naturally turn into swings. So if I was you, this is how I'd go about learning swings. Start with the step through, because it's easy and just so damn useful. Next is the sideways underbar. Once you can do that smoothly, you can slowly change your run-up angle towards the railing until you're doing straight underbars, which are super epic. They use them in action movies all the time and are the most useful skill to go through a tight space. Another easy pickup for any beginner is the 360 underbar. Do it slowly first and pay close attention to this cross grip, which allows us to really move through the rail in one smooth motion without having to readjust our grip. The cross grip is also a really good grip later on when we're gonna jump to things and grab onto branches or rails because it's a really secure position to hold an object because you're holding onto it from both sides at the same time. All right, long story short, how do we do the cross grip? Left hand on top, and now what you wanna do next is you wanna reach with your right hand underneath while twisting it. So when you grab onto the rail, the palm of your left hand is facing towards the ground and the palm of your right hand is facing towards the sky. And now we have this nice wound up position with our grip that we're gonna unwind as we pass through the rail. So here we wanna now squat down to get on the level with the rail and then we wanna unwind our hands 
and try to stay as close to the bar as possible as we go through into a sitting position. And now we want to swing our legs through towards our left. So we're going to let go of our left hand. Our right hand stays on top of the rail. Swing our legs out. And now we are going to turn the underbars into swings. Again, this is a huge topic and I spend quite some time on this in my course. But here's the short version. 360 underbars turn into 360 swings. Slowly increase the distance to the bar as you get more comfortable. You can add a string to the bar to simulate an obstacle. Fun. I think this might be a bit tight for the 360 on the bar. Let's give it a look. Ah, nope. Ta-da! That just worked, but what? When it comes to forward swings, there's one common mistake I see. Don't release both arms at the same time. That way you're gonna feel like you're gonna fall on your back and you can't see the landing. Instead, it's much more comfortable to release one hand at a time. There's gonna be a natural rhythm to it that you're gonna learn. Doing it this way helps me find the right body position and also allows me to keep an eye on my landing at all times. Moving forward from here, I think the best way to progress your swings is by practicing on trees. Most likely, you're gonna have an easier time finding beginner-sized swings on trees than on bars and can slowly build up the strength and coordination needed for bigger swings down the road. And because trees come in weird shapes and angles, they will teach you a much deeper understanding of swinging movements than you'd be able to acquire at a geometrical bar setup. Lesson 8, wall runs. It's time to turn into the Prince of Persia and learn the favorite move of people who watch The Office. Parkour! <laughs> the Tic Tac. When you learn the 45 degree Tic Tac, it's most important that you develop the feeling of sticking on the wall with your feet. To achieve the sticky feeling, you need to adjust your speed, the angle of your run-up, your takeoff distance to the wall, and how high you place your foot on the wall. Now, ideally I would just be able to give you a nice mathematical number and show you the exact angle you need to hit when you approach a wall, but the problem is that angle is going to depend on the grip of the wall, where you want to go, how fast you're approaching the wall, and the specific details of that obstacle. So. What I need you to find is you need to go in a search of this feeling of sticking on the wall, which can be really... <laughs> I wish I could tell you something specific, but it is something you have to play with. You have to go explore these movements. And when you find that feeling and you find that your foot is sticking on the wall, that's when you know you're doing it right. However, there's one easy, easier way to get to know this feeling of stickiness which you can learn by, or which you can achieve by practicing on slanted walls. Sticking to a straight wall is really difficult, but sticking to a slanted wall is a lot easier. So ideally, go around your neighborhood and look for a wall that's at an angle. Some common places where you can find these kind of walls are skate parks, playground ramps, or even trees. The second concept is redirecting your momentum. We're not really generating any power from the wall, really. All we're doing is re we're redirecting the speed, the momentum we have from our run-up. So any power that you want from your tic-tac really has to come from the run-up. And then all we're doing is we're stepping off the wall and redirecting where we're sending that momentum. So it's not a kick or a crazy push or a jump to and from the wall. All you're doing is running and then you're sending that speed somewhere else. Again, that's a feeling that you want to develop as you practice the tic-tac. It's not something that you can just learn like this. You've got to get a feeling for what that redirection of momentum feels like. And the only way you're going to get that is by doing easier tic-tacs on slanted walls and quite a bit of trial and error, searching and playful movement. And eventually you'll get there and you'll be able to adapt that feeling to any obstacle you come across. Next, try out the 180 tic-tac. Usually it's easiest to learn this by slowly approaching the wall from a steeper and steeper angle. And lastly, learn the wall run, which will teach you how to transfer your forwards momentum into upwards momentum. Ideally, get yourself a grippy wall that's around shoulder height. If you run up a higher wall, you will need to do a muscle up to get on top. And a muscle up is an intermediate skill in my book, so I won't get into it here. I recommend to just pick a lower wall instead and learn how to use your momentum to carry you all the way up into waist support. Oh hey, 
remember the waist support? I told you, it will come in handy. If you learn it properly, including the step up from waist support, you'll now be able to fly all the way to the top of a wall with almost no strength necessary. Now that's dope. What's next? If you learn all the skills I've mentioned in this video, you could just stop learning new moves and you'd already have a highly efficient Swiss army knife of parkour skills, which will allow you to overcome 90% of obstacles and are a great exercise and can be creatively combined to make new moves. So if you wanted to, you could just keep it at that and enjoy exploring your world with your newfound parkour skills. However, if you wanted to move on and learn intermediate skills, you now have the perfect foundation. Here are some suggestions. The parkour roll, the muscle up, the turn vault, lazy vault, dash, kong, gibbon swings, 180s on a bar, and 180s from one wall to another. Rail flare and the palm spin are all great. There's a lot of fun to be had. I do plan to cover all of those skills in my future courses, by the way. If this sounds fun, there should be nothing holding you back now. As you can see, the level one skill of each movement category is easy enough to be practiced with low risk, even if you're not fit. And by doing the lower level of a move, you're automatically gonna build the strength and coordination to level up to the next one. I myself started out as a complete video game nerd, so it's definitely possible to get good without an athletic background. What you just watched is essentially an outline of my beginner course, The Perfect Takeoff, which comes with a full on tutorial on how to learn each of the skills mentioned, a follow along warm up, quests to prompt your own movement exploration and creativity, my method on overcoming irrational fear, how to stick the perfect landing, and many, many, many more things that I had to leave out for the sake of keeping this video somewhat short, which I definitely failed at. If you made it this far, it's probably not a bad idea to click the link in the description or in the pinned comment to check out my online course and start learning today. Keep moving and see you soon.